We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and of course I have my lovely wife, Sister Antoinette Bolden, sitting on side of me. And as always, we're glad to bring you the things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share with you. Amen. Amen. All right. So, <laughs> we've been uh, talking about persecution. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to the third chapter of 2 Timothy. And we're going to continue on with what we've been discussing about persecution. In fact, um, we're going to start reading at verse 10. Uh, it says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecution. So you see there what, what Paul is telling Timothy You've known <clears throat> how I've been persecuted. Now we'll get back to that in a second. It says, Afflictions which came to me at what? Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. All right? So he says, Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And so, He's telling, Paul is telling Timothy and us as for, you know, that we we can read about his persecutions. At that time, Timothy had heard about the persecutions, persecutions that he suffered. Now, when you go to verse 12 and he says, all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Basically, what he's saying is persecutions is proof that you're living for the Lord. Now, we're talking about true persecutions. We're not talking about something you brought on yourself on yourself. You know, you done had a baby with the wrong person and now they giving you the fit. That's that's not <laughs> that's that's your choice. You see, we're talking about persecutions for the gospel's sake. You see that? For for the gospel's sake, for you living a godly life life, not what you were out there doing <clears throat> when you were out in the world and bringing things upon yourself like that. But persecution uh for godly sake. And look at what he says there. He said he endured it says, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. In verse 11, at the last part of the verse, it says, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. You see that? So that that's the good thing is that God delivers us from persecution. You see that? It doesn't mean that when we deliver from, when we get delivered from one, that we won't have to go through anything else. He's just, he said, out of them all. In other words, they kept coming. It never, it was never ending for Paul, but God kept delivering him out of persecution now we have to make this clear uh god delivered paul out of persecution not because he was so concerned with paul's flesh being persecuted but god wanted paul to go on and to continue to do the things that that he wanted him to do let's say for instance one, one persecution you can read about in the book of acts is when they took paul outside of the city and stoned him and the bible says supposing that he was dead they left now you get the idea that he was dead. Those people that did enough stonings to know when somebody was dead. But the Bible says after they left, he got up and he walked off. He walked away. Why? Because his work wasn't finished yet. He had to go somewhere else to preach. And so that persecution came and God delivered him out of it. Why? Because God had some more for him to do. You see that? And so God will deliver you out of persecution. Not so that you can be comfortable and on easy street from here on out. But because God has more for you to do. Now... Here's the question you should ask yourself. Am I learning the lesson that I'm supposed to learn from this particular persecution that I'm going through? That's something that you should ask yourself. Amen. And I was just kind of thinking along the, the, the same lines about um, learning something, which means if we're going to learn anything and get out of it what we're supposed to get out of it, um, including the Lord being glorified in our lives and showing his power through it, we can't run away from it. We can't resist it and try to um, negate it because, you know, a lot of times um, I've heard many believers try to rebuke things that they have to go through. Mm -hmm. um, but the, it's a part of our growth. Mm -hmm. And we can't think that we're going to walk this Christian walk um, day to day and not have anything come against us at all because, of course, the Bible tells us that, which means when things happen, and like you said, especially... Um, when we're suffering for Christ's sake, 
we're not to resist that and not to try to do away with it, but allow the Lord to handle it the same way it says here that the Lord delivered him. Um, that's just another area that we're put in a position to trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a good point that you make there, that the Lord delivered him. He wasn't trying to deliver himself. Mm -hmm. He understood that when it came time for him to come out of the persecution, that the Lord would deliver him. If you remember when Peter was in jail and the church was praying for him to be delivered, Peter was asleep. He wasn't trying to, he wasn't writing up some kind of escape plan thinking, I know God has more for me than this. I, you know, he, right. Peter understood <laughs> what the Lord had said to him, that you were going to get old. When you get old, you're going to be led about to places you don't want to be led. You know, you're going to be led around. And so uh, he understood that he was going to get old. You see that? And so with that came peace. But, you know, when the persecution came and it looked like he was going to be killed on the very next day, he was asleep. He wasn't worried about, okay, I know God said this for my life. And so I'm going to help God out and break mm -hmm. out of this. No, you don't need God. Don't need your help to get out of persecution, to get you out of persecution. Mm -hmm. He'll deliver you out of persecution. You see that? He'll deliver you. Amen. All right. So we're going to start back at verse 1 of, and uh, go ahead and read through this list. And this is, of course, talking about what kind of people persecutions come through and why persecution come. All right. Go ahead and, keep, go ahead and read. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Okay, so that's what we, that's what we talked about yesterday, uh, being without natural affection. I think yesterday we talked about, you know, naturally, so how people can be without natural affection, uh, especially women, you know getting outside of their place in the home it's natural you know for a woman to 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 take care of her home to love her husband and to love her children it is not natural for a woman to have children or to have a husband and not minister to them it's not natural for a woman uh to rather be at work than to be at home ministering to the people that you know the person that she's married to and the children that she's given birth to there's something wrong when that take place, you see. And so we covered a lot of that yesterday. So now we want to get to the root of why um, these it shows up in the natural realm. When, when people, when women can naturally not, not look after uh, what they have been called to look after, you know, concerning their husband and their children. We want to know now why. And not only women, but men as well. It can naturally, you know leave their place as a husband and as a as a father and things like that <clears throat> and and even having unhealthy relationships with their parents his parents you know is uh, those things are natural it's natural for a man to leave and cleave mother and father to leave mother and father and cleave to that wife and so even when that takes place you know where a man is not leaving and cleaving because here in the last few years i've seen examples of that you know of of um, men not doing that, and which is odd to me because that I, I guess me, you know, when I turned seventeen, I left home. You know, I graduated and 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 moved on with a career. You see that, and to me that was just a natural thing to do. I'm a man; I, it's time for me to get on about my business and start establishing myself. But unfortunately, many people, many men, don't do that. A lot of men just. A satisfied stand where they are uh, under their parents and, and things like that and that's not natural and so what we want to talk about just br briefly here is why, what affects that in a person because you have to remember whatever we see naturally is indicative of what's going on spiritually you see that so when a person gets away from their nature naturally so where you can see it is because something is off Balance there spiritually, amen. And so we we want to. That's what we want to cover. So what is the problem there? When if you if you remember and you can go back to the Garden of Eden, God has set everything in motion. He had created mankind, and we were naked, and and we were not aware 
of that nakedness. You see, we were not uh, ashamed of that nakedness. That was natural. But when we got out of God's will and when we disobeyed God, everything turned upside down and was no longer natural. So the unfortunate thing is we as believers and we as, you know, in the world, I should say, you know, anybody that's in this universe, we've gotten accustomed to what's not natural. We've been trained. And in fact, the, the, the world is doing a pretty good job today of getting people conditioned in people's minds. Now, that's something that you have to understand. People's minds become conditioned through um, people's minds become conditioned through um, television, through movies. You, you see enough perversion out there pretty soon that perversion becomes a part of everyday life. That's why it's so important to be careful what you watch on TV and things like that. You see. All right. We see we see somebody uh, have left a, a question. We'll, we'll address that here pretty soon just to let let them know. Amen. All right. So. Natural affection, unnatural affection. What is it that the Lord wanted to know about it? That when we see these things that we're talking about, as far as unnatural affection, the things that we went over, it's because their affection towards God is not in the place that it need to be. You see that? In other words, when you don't love your own creator and when you don't put him in his position, it throws everything else off. I can remember years ago, um, you know, putting together, I would buy these little things like um, bookshelves and desks and things like that. And of course, you, they come in a flat box, which means I have to put them together, you know. And when I would put them together, if I took the wrong piece of something, like a board or a screw, and put it somewhere where it didn't belong, it would throw everything else off. Mm -hmm. And I can remember I put together a desk for an auntie of mine, and it took me <laughs> all day, and I mean literally all day, to put that desk together. And what could happen is you can just be, I was just going along, and I was just thinking, okay, this goes right here. You know, I got away from the instructions, because I felt like, okay, I can eye this and see how everything goes. And I started putting that thing together, and... And then halfway through, I realized I did something wrong and I had to take it all back apart again. Back, I had to get back to the point where I got off, in other words. You know, where I merged a piece of it with the wrong side of it or something like that. And I had to start from that. You see that? And so what happened was it threw everything else off. If I would have kept going, nothing would have fit the way that it was supposed to fit. Hold the holes that you put the screw the screws in, those would not have been aligned. And that's what happens when our relationship with God is not where it's supposed to be. Everything get misaligned. You're not aligned properly the way that you're supposed to be. Right. Amen. And I, I think that's a good point um, <laughs> that you bring out. And, and the, it always goes back to us um, lining up with the word. Um, and I, I don't think I can say it enough that if we will just learn to follow what we say we believe, um, then it helps to keep things in perspective spiritually and it helps us to line up um, when when we are in line with our creator and knowing that he has set um, things in order we can't go wrong in other words mm -hmm. and if we will learn to trust him in that way rather than us trying to figure out things on our own and trying to um, do it um, using this world system or maybe just the way our we've seen it in our family or whatever we may have taken on naturally so if we learn to um in a very broad sense trust the lord with every single thing and trust that however he laid it out in his word it's designed to work that way and when we get away from that then um it's designed to do just the opposite <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amen so that and, and that's why it's important that we we stay in line with god's word because everything else lines up after that when we when we move God out of his place and out of his position where he, he, his rightful place which is God in our lives whether we like it or not whether we accept it or not he's still God that don't stop him from being God but but what it does is when you don't put keep God in his place as the object of worship 
and the only one that you worship in this life, it, it causes your life to be misaligned. Marriages have been broken up because God was not the head of the marriage. Right. You see that? Homes have been broken up. Lives, people have made wrong decisions because they were making decisions without God's, you know, uh, input or without listening and, 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 uh, and a willingness to follow God. You see that? If God had mapped out our lives, whenever we stray from God's original plan, even when we don't know that plan, we get ourselves in trouble. We get, we get ourselves into all kind of things that we shouldn't be in when we're outside of God's will. And, and, and you know, what's unfortunate is a lot of times, a lot of times people are, are not aware of how far off they are until they come back to God or until they come to God. Other than that, you think all that turmoil you're going through is normal. This is just life. But there are a lot of things that we go through that we don't have to go through, whether we're saved or unsaved, when we choose not to uh, follow God's perfect will for our lives. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's get to this question here. Uh, the question was, uh, in the chat room, are you talking about adult children, uh, adult children um, living with their parents? I was 30 years old, living off the streets, and got and got pneumonia. You see that? Uh, let me see. I gave up the streets and moved into my mother's home. Otherwise, I would have perished. Now, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about a person necessarily living with their parents. We're talking about leaving and cleaving. Mm -hmm. the, what we're talking about, now the Bible says a, a man will leave and cleave mother, you know, will leave mother and father and cleave to who? His wife. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, we're talking about you having a wife. So let's keep things in perspective with the word. We're talking about you having a wife. We're not talking about folks who have fallen on hard times who are living with their parents. You see that? Not, not, that's not what we're talking about. Although in that, we, st we believe that people should have their independency, if that make any sense. You should have some kind of independence. You can be independent and still, you know, be dependent, if that make any sense. In other words, there's nothing wrong with getting help. So we're not, a, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about in, in the unnatural affection. Now, the key word is affection is when a man... It's still cleaving right. to the parents. So much so that there's not room for a wife. We're talking about right. an emotional affection there. Mm -hmm. To where there's no room. You see, your parents are meant to be mentors. They're not meant to act in place of your spouse. Yeah. You see, and so when we're talking about unnatural affection, we're talking about when something is in the place where it shouldn't be. So that when the thing comes that's supposed to be there, you don't have room for it. So if I'm giving all of my affection to my mother and my mother is playing the role of my wife, then there's no room for a wife. You see, a natural wife. You see that? And so that, that's what we're talking about when, when we're talking about that. Not the idea of needing help and turning it down because I'm a man and so I can do this on my own. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the affection part of it. You see that, that and that's what that's what the idea is, because naturally. So if the affection part is where uh, it should be, then naturally you will, you know, eventually get to the place where you need to be, where you've set up shop, you've set up your own place and these things like that. You see right. that. Amen. I was actually going to say the same thing, just um, that the focus is on the unnatural affections. And that um, regardless of what that natural situation is, the, the first thing to examine is the, uh, the affection in that and whether or not um, our mindset is right, you know, and whether or not it's in line with the word. Like you said, not having someone else in the place affectionately that the wife or the husband is supposed to be in. And of course, in this case, we're specifically talking about um, the man and you know what the word says concerning him leaving and cleaving mm -hmm. and so we have to keep that in mind um, anytime I mean and it can it can go across the board in so many areas of course you know we've talked about a, a few of them but um, it can even be 
you know, your job over your relationship with the Lord or anything over your relationship with mm-hmm. the Lord. Because I think we kind of touched on that yesterday about when we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and we have that Holy Spirit there leading and guiding us, then um, Christ should be number one. Mm-hmm. He should, nothing should surpass that. And our desire should be to him first and foremost. And when that's not happening, that's just another example of something unnatural um, going on. And so then again, we have to go back, you know, and find out what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So when you see the more to the story is this, when you see something that does not line up uh, naturally, so with the word naturally. Then always look at where you are spiritually with God. Right. Always look at where you are spiritually with God. In that, you'll find the problem. Uh, sometimes what happens is people see something that they're doing naturally that they know don't line up with the word. And they try to fix it naturally instead of submitting to God and allowing God to mm. to fix it. So that's, that's what we're talking about there without natural affection. In other words, something that goes against nature. God's nature. Now, we're not right. talking about what man have transformed nature to. We're talking about right. God's nature. Amen. Yeah. All right. So, if we have any other questions or comments, uh, those that are listening in, you can uh, press, I think, one, and we'll be able to take your question or comment. All right, it doesn't look like we have any other questions or comments. So, uh, any questions or comments? Did you have anything else you want to add? All right, if we don't have any questions or comments, we want to say thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something was said that have been a blessing to you, and we pray that you will continue to listen in to this broadcast. Have a blessed day.